Hey, it's Zach from How Chew. I hope you guys have been staying safe and healthy. I know I haven't done a video in a few months. Um, just been kind of busy working on a lot of projects that are coming up soon. So I'm happy to show you today the Raspberry Pi 400, which is the latest single board computer from the Raspberry Pi Foundation that they released a few weeks ago. And I'm gonna take it apart and uh, see what makes it tick. And then I'm gonna show you a DIY option that I made a while back. Um, so you can build one on your own if you want to. It's a little bit different. And so what this actually is, is a Raspberry Pi keyboard with a Raspberry Pi 4 built into it. This is similar to the Commodore 64 and other great retro computers of yore. Uh, in fact, the Raspberry Pi Foundation showed some C64 stats compared to uh, the Raspberry Pi 400 and the CPU clock speed is like 1800 times faster on this than on the C64 and memory is like 65,000 times. So, um, I mean, obviously everybody knows how far we've gone, but uh, this is a really cool comparison that they put together. So again, this is the kit itself. It comes with some extra stuff that I'll show you, but you can also buy the keyboard by itself for a little bit less. Now let's see what's in the box. Ooh, that's nice. So again, this comes in two options. The standalone keyboard's like $70. If you wanna buy the kit, it's 100, which I think is totally worth it. Uh, the keyboard's avail available in a, like a variety of languages. So if you want a non-English keyboard, you can get that. Um, it looks to be about the same size as the original one. Again, here's my modded one. It's the same exact size housing. It just has these vents and it looks a lot less DIY. So in the box, obviously you get the keyboard itself. You get the uh, official Raspberry Pi mouse, which you can also buy by itself if you want to. And it matches the uh, same color here. I think the Pi 400 is only available in white and red, though I know the official keyboard comes in black as well. So this just kind of plugs in and you can plug it in if you're left or right handed, it'll still fit. Uh, sorry if you hear any weird noises in the background, there's actually a hurricane passing by here soon. So there's a lot of things falling and hitting the roof um, of the shop here. Um, so here's the uh, power supply that the kit comes with. Again, this is USB-C, which is what all the new Raspberry Pis use, which is great. I know that the EU is issued a mandate where all new electronics sold there have to ha use like a USB-C port in order to cut down on all the e-waste that we've had. So micro USB can go away, which is great because this is reversible. So this is, is the official Raspberry Pi power supply, which is pretty awesome. You also get a lot of pieces of cardboard. Here's the official Raspberry Pi beginner's guide. So again, this kit is only $30 more than the standalone keyboard, which I think is totally worth it. This is the latest version, fourth edition, which includes a lot of information on the Pi 400. Obviously the, the third edition didn't. And this is actually the number one book on the, um, the How To Raspberry Pi Beginners Book top list, which I'll put in the video description. Um, this is, you know, number one. And it just has tons of information about Raspberry Pi OS, different projects, what you can use it for. I mean, even as a non-beginner, you know, you can learn some like Python, um, like how to hook up an LED GP uh, to the uh, GPIO header. We actually have a lot of guides like this on how to, I'm sure a lot of you know that already. Um, so push buttons, but it's pretty cool to see this all in one place and it's very well designed. Uh, it's a hefty book. It's like um, 240 pages. Yeah, this feels nice and it smells good because it's a book. All right. You also get an adapter for your micro SD card to plug into an SD card slot on your computer. And this is a, an HDMI to micro HDMI port. So all the new Raspberry Pis use this really tiny micro HDMI port. Now as a keyboard, I think this is okay. I mean, I like mechanical keyboards. You know, this is great for like a chiclet style keyboard. It's nothing to write home about. Um, what's really cool though is this, this is called the 400 because inside is a Raspberry Pi 4, but it's actually like a modified version of the 4. It's not just a Raspberry Pi 4 computer, you know, which looks like this. This wouldn't even fit in here, uh, even the board by itself. Um, and the reason that they did that, they created a special printed circuit board that has all the Raspberry Pi 4 components on it in a different form factor. And they kind of explained it that 
because of the scale of how many they were going to make, so they, they made like a few hundred thousand to start, it was actually cheaper to redesign the Pi 4 to fit on this special circuit board than to make a circuit board that the Pi 4 would then plug into. Um, same with using the compute module, which is like a smaller Raspberry Pi. Now my DIY option, which I'll show you later, uses a Raspberry Pi 0W, and as you can see with the LED, it has a battery in it to make it totally wireless. Um, so if you want it, you know, the 0W computing power or, or really power consumption is what you might want there, then a DIY approach is better. But overall, this is an awesome, an awesome thing. And it's an awesome value because, you know, the, the normal Raspberry Pi is like $50. So for double the price, you get this whole kit and you get this awesome, awesome, uh, awesomeness. So what I'm going to show you is all the ports and then I'm going to open this thing up somehow, show you what's on the inside. Uh, and then I'll show you the DIY option. So what we have here is our GPIO header port on, the, on here, which is great. This is what you can use to interface all kinds of cards and add-ons. And you know, it's on the back here, but you can put like, you know, a ribbon cable extension on it. And there are a lot of different things you can buy to do that. Yeah, I'm really glad that they included this because this is a, a core part of Raspberry Pi is, you know, connecting things to the header and, and hacking it and modding it. And if they didn't have this, then it's just a, a computer. Which is fine because even though this is the Pi 4, they increased the clock speed to 1.8 gigahertz as opposed to 1.5, which is what the regular Raspberry Pi 4 uses. So this is actually far more powerful. And honestly, if you just wanted to do normal browsing and computing, um, browsing YouTube, like you could use this as a computer and just hook it up to a monitor. So the SD card that comes here comes with uh, Raspberry, uh, sorry, Raspberry Pi OS, formerly known as Raspbian. And so it's ready to go, it's based, it's Linux. You can just plug it in and use it. Uh, they, they even put the SD card in here. So this is actually, this could be a computer that you just plug in and use for normal stuff. So also on here, you'll see they have an extension for the micro SD card, which is great. So you don't have to like open it up. Uh, usually you don't have to access the micro SD card on the Raspberry Pi unless you're swapping out for another one. But um, that's kind of neat. There are two micro HDMI ports, so you can hook up two monitors, which are supported also by the uh, Raspberry Pi 4. You'll see it basically has the same ports as the Raspberry Pi 4 has, except that it has two USB 3.0 ports, one 2.0, and then the fourth one's missing because internally that's what the keyboard uses. So I don't think that's really an issue. Um, it has a full-size Ethernet port, which I believe does gigabit, and then there's the power port for a USB-C. I don't know what this thing is. This is just like a little opening. I guess you could put something in there. I don't, I don't know what that would be. Maybe a lock? I, I don't know. It's weird. Uh, and then you have some vents here. There's no fan in here. Um, apparently they've achieved this by using like passive cooling, kind of like what these Flirk cases use, where the whole thing is a heat sink, uh, which are pretty great. If you're wondering what the button is, this is a power button, and I have a video on this that you may have seen. But if not, check the video description, I'll, I'll include it there. Okay, I'm gonna open this bad boy up, see what makes it tick. Oh, well apparently there are no screws under the rubber feet, which means that you probably just have to pry it apart. And to do that safely, I'm gonna use one of these tools that I use for opening like iPhones and stuff. Okay, so there are a bunch of snaps on the front. All right, so there are actually a lot of snaps all the way around. And a ribbon gable. Okay, so this is either an RF shield or the passive cooling thing that they were talking about. Yeah, so it looks like it's made of aluminum. So that means it's definitely a giant heat sink because the magnet won't stick to it. So this is how they achieve not having a fan. I guess that's the way to go. There's also a ribbon cable here, which we can just clip up to remove. Obviously, this is the only part that's different. You can see it's labeled as USA. So if they you have a different, you know, country, then they just swap out the top half. Yeah, the Raspberry Pi Foundation seems to make all their stuff operate in every country and meet every country's requirements rather than making like a different version the Raspberry Pi doesn't have a power button, and our guide on how to add one to your Pi usually is one of the top ones that people seem to use, um, which is nice. But for this one, they sort of added a power button. And what you do is you hold down a function F10 for several seconds. You can see they actually have a power button icon on here now. And that'll shut it down. It does like a software shutdown, just like the normal power button would. Uh, anyways. Looks like they have a little piece of foam here for some reason. Okay, yeah, you, you really have to pull on this thing to remove it. It's uh, got a little piece of adhesive on here. Oh, that's what it is. So this is um, the, uh, what's this called? Like thermal paste, like for a CPU. 
There's a little bit of thermal paste on here that makes contact with the CPU here. And then that helps to distribute the heat across this giant aluminum heat sink. It's actually pretty cool. All right, and this is the Raspberry Pi 400 board. Uh, this is very different looking than a Raspberry Pi 4, but you'll notice most of it is empty. This is all the same components that the Raspberry Pi 4 has. Um, they've just increased the clock speed, which they might have done through software. Um, I'm guessing that they were able to do that because the heat sink dissipates so much heat. Uh, I'm not really sure. But yeah, this is the whole thing. It's pretty amazing. Um, take this SD card out just to be sure. Don't break it. Looks like it comes with a 16 gig card and an actual sand disk, which is kind of refreshing. But yeah, this is it. This is the Raspberry Pi 400. I think it's absolutely worth buying, even if you already have a Raspberry Pi. You can do all the other stuff that you normally can. You can use it for RetroPie or Kodi. This would be a cool like media center keyboard. So you can use it and search for things and have it, you know, connected to your TV or monitor. I'll connect it in a little bit, but for now I want to show you the DIY option that I made. Okay, so when the original uh, Raspberry Pi keyboard was released about a year and a half ago, I immediately thought that I wanted to put a Raspberry Pi in it and make it a standalone thing. Um, it has its own power button I added, an LED, and a Raspberry Pi Zero. These are the original ports that came on it, and then I've labeled them all. Um, I have a full guide in the video description, step by step, if you want to build one of these. Um, the cost will be about the same as buying one of those, so I don't know that it's worth it, unless you want to use the Raspberry Pi Zero W, which isn't as powerful by far, but it uses way less power. So depending on what project you want to use, if you want to make this a fully wireless thing, you can just carry around and then, you know, cast to uh, displays, you know, depending on what you're doing. Um, that's an option for you. So I'm just going to take it apart and show you how it works. Yeah, this was covered by Adafruit and Hackster and a few others when I made it. Somebody else also did one for the Raspberry Pi Model A. So you can see it looks very similar. I don't want to have to undo this right now, but that's where the ribbon cable is connected. Um, this is actually where all the circuitry is for the keyboard in this original model. So you, if you buy the original keyboard, USB keyboard, which you can still do, this is what it'll look like. Um, I have a 3.7 volt, 2000 milliamp hour or two amp hour um, lithium polymer battery, LiPo battery in here. And that's hooked up to this little Adafruit uh, voltage booster. Basically converts, it's called the power boost. It converts the 3.7 volts to the five volts that USB devices need. It also allows you to pow, uh, to charge it. So there's a little US, micro USB on the top here and you can plug in whatever charger you want to recharge the battery. And then this is the Raspberry Pi Zero W computer. And um, I've soldered my power button and my LED directly to the header just for the sake of size. And I have a little heatsink in here. So this is effectively the same thing except, you know, not nearly as powerful. And honestly, I, I do question whether it's useful to have it battery powered and totally wireless because honestly, you can't really cast uncompressed video well, like if you wanted to cast a movie, you know, over your network to your TV, like how your Chromecast works is the Chromecast generally accesses that information directly or it's accessing the compressed version, but like a, a video screen record is not compressed, so it would be laggy. Um, but it's still kind of cool if you want to just, you know, connect to the, the command line and do random random things. Um, also, mine doesn't have GPIO access. I just didn't have space or time. It's just a fun project. But yeah, this is the, uh, the official Raspberry Pi 400 versus the DIY Raspberry Pi 0100, I guess you'd call it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you Raspberry Pi OS, which comes pre-installed. And to do so, I'm going to use the Adventure Pi, which many of you have seen. But if you haven't, it's basically a DIY arcade inside of a, uh, a hard case that's super durable. Yep. So I have a video on this full build, which you should definitely check out. And I'll put that in the video description too. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and hook the Raspberry Pi 400 up to it. This is an HDMI to micro HDMI adapter for the display. And I'm going to hook up the power cable that came with it. I can also power this directly off the power bank in here but uh, I don't wanna mess with that right now. And of course, connect the mouse. Yeah, I mean, it just kinda works, I guess. Um, looks like I need to adjust the size a little bit. It's not taking up the, uh, the whole screen. Um, but yeah, welcome to Raspberry Pi Desktop. Before you start, there are a few things to set up. Click next to get started. Yeah, the center, the scroll wheel button, the scroll wheel button is very, very sensitive. Um, when I'm scrolling, I just seem to accidentally click it all the time, so I guess that'll take some getting used to. 
But yeah, so this is Raspberry Pi OS. I mean, it comes with a bunch of stuff preloaded. It comes with Chromium, which is basically Google Chrome. Um, I mean, this is a full computer. It's pretty amazing. For $70, you have a full computer with a 1.8 gigahertz processor, decent amount of RAM. I mean, I would absolutely recommend buying this. Um, a lot of places are sold out right now as of when this video is released. It's on pre-order. And I'll put some links in the video description for you to, to get one. Um, I was able to get one from Canakit. They had it in stock. I don't know if they still do. Uh, I know that the demand's pretty high right now, but check out those links and I highly recommend picking one of these up. It's just a lot of fun. We're definitely gonna be modding this thing on how to. So, uh, you know, add us on Facebook. Be sure to subscribe and like this video if you liked it. And remember, how to is a website with lots and lots of Raspberry Pi guides and videos and all kinds of cool stuff that you can build. Um, just check us out so that you can catch all the mods we're gonna do to this thing. And I really appreciate you watching. Stay healthy. We have another video coming soon, so uh, stay tuned. And as always, thank you very much for watching.